Donald Trump has surrendered to arrest over overnight in Georgia. Well, his mugshot this morning is everywhere. And his ex page, formerly known of Twitter, of course, is back up and running for the first time since January 2021. Well, he posted the mugshot with the caption, election interference, never surrender. It's extraordinary. He seems to be quite proud of this mugshot. Well, mm. Trump faces 13 felony counts in the state of Georgia regarding efforts to overturn the state's 2020 presidential election results. But joining us now to discuss this is the senior lecturer in US politics, Richard Johnson. Um, Richard, it seems that this photo is so many things to so many people. Mm. To Donald Trump's detractors, it's a, it's a scene of a guy who has broken all the rules and they're delighted that this photo has been taken. But Donald Trump himself has made it into a T-shirt. Yeah, I mean, I think that politi legally speaking, this uh, case in Georgia is the most treacherous for Trump. And there are a number of reasons for that, not least that the path to a pardon is um, it's pretty much not there for him in the way that it is in the federal cases. But politically speaking, uh, I think the Trump campaign has always wanted to have the mugshot. And uh, this has provided, it, has provided that. And the reason for that is because Trump supporters in general don't think that he did anything wrong. And there's a minority of Trump's supporters who think he probably did do something wrong, but are supporting him anyway because they believe the system to be corrupt or broken, um, or they just see the imperative of defeating uh, Joe Biden and establishment Republicans as, as a greater imperative. So this, none of these indictments have been particularly politically damaging for Trump. Um, and and I, I expect the mugshot is not going to do him any harm with his own base. That's so interesting, because what, what do you think it will do in, in terms of public perception? Because it does feed into the narrative, as you say, it, it helps really to establish that narrative of Trump versus the establishment. He is uh, almost pinning it as a badge of honour on his ex page. But it's also quite stark to see this mugshot, isn't it? How do you think the optics will have an effect on would-be Trump voters? Is it a game changer? For Trump, the, the showman, the, the, the celebrity of many years, one of his insights is that he needs to keep his name in the news. And Trump has, his, historically, when he was a, a big figure in kind of uh, New York gossip columns uh, uh, in the 90s, sometimes the columns weren't very nice, but Trump uh, encouraged them anyway because it kept him relevant, kept him salient. You can see even... Um, with going to Georgia uh, just hours after the other Republican candidates were having uh, an, a, a debate, Trump has managed to uh, completely uh, shift the conversation away from Trump's challengers to back to Trump uh, himself. He's, he's sucked the oxygen out. And so this is, in a sense, part of the, uh, the ongoing uh, drama uh, of, of the Trump candidacy. Now, that's not to say that there aren't uh, political issues here. Uh, independent voters um, are not um, particularly uh, enamored by this. There's a segment of Republican voters, admittedly a minority, but a segment of Republican voters for whom this will be uh, a problem for him. And it's also going to be a distraction for him in terms of he's going to have to appear uh, in, in front of uh, legal officials throughout the campaign, uh, whether that's in Georgia, in Florida, in Washington, D.C., or New York. And that just means there's less, uh, opp fewer opportunities for Trump to be in front of his own voters in adoring crowds uh, on, on, on the campaign stage across the country. Although it does seem that at least up until now, amongst registered Republicans, the sort of perceived political prosecution has helped his case, has established him more and more as that front runner. I, I wonder if that would change at all but, uh, as things progress. But, but, but ultimately, perhaps, it is going to be his, his biggest benefit in this primary and maybe his biggest disadvantage widening out to that general election when uh, the independent registered and Democrat registered voters get to take part too. I said when Trump first announced his candidacy back in 2015 that his candidacy was a 
and, his, and the support for him was a consequence of a of a sharp decline in trust that American voters had in political institutions. And this is in, in many ways a, a continuation of that collapse in trust in, in political institutions. The, the legal system uh, in the United States uh, always had a, a certain uh, partisan uh, bent to it because um, prosecutors in many states are uh, elected officials, uh, Supreme, state Supreme Court judges are elected, and of course, federal judges are appointed by presidents. So there was always a political dimension to it. But uh, in, in many ways, the, the, that dimension had been able to be held behind a certain curtain of propriety, and people kind of agreed to the rules of the game. There's a sense now, both from Republicans, about certain prosecutors pursuing Trump, and Democrats, when they look at, say, the Supreme Court, uh, that the legal system now is is merely politics by another means, and that that's why I don't really think the the legal jeopardy Trump's in will have a tremendous impact um, on him politically. Indeed, it may assist him because it keeps him uh, front and center of the news story. And what impact do you think it will have on Donald Trump as as a man, as a figure? Because as you say, the Georgia trial uh, looks to be the most legally treacherous for Trump. Do you think he is nervous about that? Because yesterday we saw that convoy go from New Jersey uh, to the courthouse. It's the largest convoy that we've seen so far. It did seem to be a very public display of defence. Do you think he is feeling nervous about this? If you're Trump and you're thinking about your own personal future, whether you would end up behind bars or not, um, or in some form of incarceration, whether that's actually in a prison or some kind of arrangement with the Secret Service of some kind of house arrest or custodial sentence, that is still very much a possibility. The November 2024 election assumes an even higher significance then, personally, for Donald Trump. Uh, A, because with the federal cases, uh, there's a path for him to uh, pardon himself or arrange a pardon for himself if he wins that election. And for the Georgia case, uh, there's a, uh, a, a con- more than a convention, a legal understanding that state courts don't prosecute uh, sitting presidents. Um, and so Trump might hope to play these things out, um, you know, try to delay the legal process as much as possible in Georgia have the presidential election November, and then this this case, um, you know, is put on fr- hold, freeze, wound up in some fashion. Mm-hmm. I think in terms of his own personal legal strategy, uh, the legal strategy for him is connected to the political strategy. Okay. Richard Johnson, really good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for your time.